I said I was going to talk about vaccine hesitancy and how some vaccine myths come about because I accidentally debunked one. A few days ago, actually two days ago, just after I had my vaccine jab, somebody I was talking with got a little bit concerned and said that a lot of people had become very, very ill after having gotten the vaccine jab. People who had been in perfect health up to that point. So I asked her, did she have any evidence of that? Did she have any sources for that? Did she have any links for me? I mean, anyone can say something like that. That doesn't mean a thing. I can say that I'm from Mars. People may believe me, but no, I'm not from Mars. Anyway, she sent me three links and I'll show you these three links now. I'll take it from there. So here is the first of those links. It talks about age groups and cases and it shows me some bars and this is for the AstraZeneca virus and here is the other link it takes me to a similar page with a similar table and it mentions Tazen Amaran which is the Pfizer vaccine and here is the third link for the Moderna vaccine it took me a while to figure out what on earth this was about, so I asked, what is this? Where do the 100% come from? What are these numbers of cases? I also couldn't quite figure out what these age groups were about, so I started clicking around a little bit and trying to find definitions and trying to find which site this was. So this is the site that I was on for Eudra Vigilance. That's by the European Medicine Agency. Excuse me, European Medicines Agency. Screening for adverse reactions. So I wondered what adverse reactions are, how they had defined them. So I clicked a little bit more and I find that it's defined as a noxious and unintended response to a medicine. If you then look up what noxious means, it tells you harmful, poisonous or very unpleasant. Harmful and poisonous, that sounds very bad. There are words like poisonous, toxic, deadly, harmful, dangerous, pernicious, that apparently mean the same. Then I looked at this, and that's when I realized that this is about side effects. Why? Because the highest bar is for general disorders and administration site conditions. That's things like soreness and so on, redness, that is to be expected. Everything's being called a disorder here, I don't know why. What caused me to doubt what this was about? is the fact that I could not imagine that there would be very high numbers of cases, serious cases of people becoming seriously ill after having gotten the vaccine. Because what I also discovered, I'll show you that next, because what I also discovered is that every time I clicked on country, I ended up with the Netherlands having the highest number of these cases. It was 26%, I think, for the Netherlands of all administrations. So that leads me to conclude that the Netherlands apparently has not trained its staff very well, that they're not as proficient at these vaccinations as some other countries are. And as a friend of mine in the United States remarked, it's quite possible that vaccines here in the UK are predominantly given by, for example, pharmacy staff. She says they're very experienced because they always get flu vaccinations. And in the Netherlands, it's predominantly GPs. And I don't think doctors, family doctors, I don't think that family doctors are that proficient at vaccinations. That's usually done by other medical staff, as far as I know. Again, I don't know the precise reason why the number and the, the percentage in the Netherlands would be so high. But again, this is not about people who are suddenly falling seriously ill after vaccination. It cannot possibly be the case. This is, and it made it, it made it clear, the database made it clear 
that it was about side effects, not about people who had seriously fallen ill. And the fact that they're calling it disorders is a little bit unfortunate because I don't have a disorder because my arm is a little bit sore. I don't have a condition because my arm is a little bit sore. I think it was called a general disorder. Let me check. Yep, a general disorder and administration side conditions. Well, I do not have a disorder. I had a mild response to the vaccine. That's not a disorder. I have not fallen over dead or anything near that. So the cause of this myth is the European Medicines Agency and its carelessness in how it frames things, how it phrases things. And it should take into account that when it puts stuff like this on the website, people who have no clue what it's about are going to find it and draw the wrong conclusions. That's obvious. I mean, that's to be expected. And it's a shame that there is no explanation for what exactly this is. So to sum this up, some of these myths, these conspiracy theories, these rumors are the result of careless phrasing by agencies who should know better, who should give thorough explanations and take into account that lay people end up on these sites and read things like disorder, 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 disorder and panic. Perhaps the best thing to reassure yourself is to remind yourself that the vaccinations improve the situation of people with so-called long COVID. That to me sounds very reassuring because it indicates that the vaccine is seriously doing something really positive for the body. It mobilizes your immune response to the extent that it is able to fend off COVID much better than it would be without the vaccine. It's as simple as that. And we're not all in this together, except everyone else. We're all in this together, so we bear some responsibility for one another. 